Hi everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel We Love Art. If you have not already, please like, subscribe and follow my YouTube channel. Let's start with our normal update that I do in every video that I do. I want to start with I'm sorry that I have not posted a video for the past week or two. This is because I was writing up what I wanted to say, and I had some personal stuff going on. But I do have some news to tell you all and I have an idea for my next video. I know exciting isn't it? So, I have had a good week, but I was tired for most of it, I was making this video too. Also, I am thinking about of doing my next video topic about type 1 diabetes because I have type 1 diabetes and I would like to share my experience with you. I have done a commission for the first time of someone dog which I am extremely proud of because I have never done one before. And my second bit of news is that I am potentially creating an art fundraiser to bring more awareness for artists with cerebral palsy. I am in talks with someone that works in my care company where I live, and they think it is a good idea. I am an artist with cerebral palsy. And I have an idea of creating an art fundraiser to raise awareness for artists with cerebral palsy or disabilities who are trying to make themselves but are finding it hard to make them or their artwork known to the public before. So, that is why I am partly making the fundraiser. But there is another part too and that is that maybe residents from different care, residential homes or supportive living services could contribute artwork or help in some way. If they would like to be a part, then we could give some goods to people or homes that would like some art decor in their services but can't afford or don't have money to buy this. So, this could mean that we could make a difference to those that are struggling more than other care companies in the UK. Okay, so we are going to start part 2 on educating you all on cerebral palsy. Last time I talked about the causes of cerebral palsy and the symptoms. So, this week we are going to be talking about the different types of cerebral palsy and associated conditions of cerebral palsy. Then we may talk about the life expectancy for people with cerebral palsy if I have time and if I am not too tired. Okay, let's get into it firstly. We are going to talk about types of cerebral palsy. So, there are three key types of cerebral palsy. However, a large amount of people will have a mixture of these types. And therefore, the complete motor function organization system will show that this might affect different parts of a person's body. So, the first type of cerebral palsy is spastic cerebral palsy. This means that the muscle tone in the body will be tight and stiff. Therefore, this will reduce the person's range of movement. While the muscles are extremely tight, spastic cerebral palsy can become very painful. Therefore, this will mean that your muscles are going to often spasm. So, this can affect different parts of your body. And therefore, the complete motor function organization system will show that this might affect the individual. The second type of cerebral palsy is dyskinetic cerebral palsy, sometimes called dystonic, athetoid or chorovatoid cerebral palsy. Dyskinetic CP causes uncontrolled, involuntary, sustained or intermittent muscle contractions. It may be difficult to maintain an upright position. The person may find it difficult to control the tongue, vocal cords and breathing. This may affect speech and language. The third type is a toxic cerebral palsy. This is where a toxic is defined as an inability to activate the correct pattern of muscles properly during movement. 
Therefore, this can also affect balance and spatial awareness. So therefore, this can make it harder to judge the body position. In relation to the things that are around, you, however, in different cases a toxic can affect the full body. For most people with this type of cerebral palsy they can walk but they are unsteady and cold have shaky movements. A toxic can affect someone's speech and language too. And the fourth type is mixed cerebral palsy. Many people can have mixed types of cerebral palsy. You may come across terms such as hemiplegia, one side of the body affected, diplegia, two limbs affected, monoplegia, one limb affected, quadriplegia, four limbs affected. That's all we have time for today. But join me next time as we talk about cerebral palsy associated conditions and life expectancy for people with cerebral palsy. Please hit the subscription button to see more of my content. See you all soon.